Hey guys, and welcome back to the CTFC Perspective. And in today's video, we are doing the fourth episode of our new series, EFL Transfer Talk. However, if you haven't watched the previous episode, click here and it will take you right to it. On the other hand, if this is the first episode of the series you have watched, essentially the rules of the series is we bring to your attention 10 confirmed transfers slash transfer rumors, seven of those being quick fire transfers. So I just get the basic information and the signing or the rumor out of the way, just so you get some fast information with no time wasted. And then at the end of the video, there'll be free transfers which I'm going to be going to in depth about so you know more information about the player and the actual transfer itself. It would mean the world to us if you could just subscribe to the channel with that notification bell turned on and like the video because the more of you that do that the more expansion that these videos actually get to the more of a fan base which should get to get involved with the channel and then the more we ultimately grow. But without further ado, there's only one other thing I've got to say before we go into it, and that's just sorry we did take a slightly larger break than usual. That's because we just took a bit of a break as... Um, I don't know if you knew, but you probably did. Recently, it was results day, so it was a very stressful time. But now that's out of the way, all good news. I'm not going to bore you with it. Like I said, the point of this series is not to waste any of your time, so let's get into it. So your first transfer rumour of the day is revolving around Nicky Maynard. If reports are to be believed, Bradford and Port Vale are showing interest in the striker, with Port Vale showing the most interest out of the two. Next up, we go to someone who I believe is one of the best centre-backs in League 2, and way too good for the actual league itself, it is Cheltenham's very own Charlie Raglan. Northampton Town has shown strong interest into the defender. Your third bit of news today is actually a confirmed signing. It is a signing that Mansfield Town have been able to capture Aaron O'Driscoll from Southampton after a successful trial. Back-to-back -back confirmed transfers here. Now, after a few days of advanced talks, Gillingham have been able to sign Kyle Dempsey. Switching it back to the rumours now, so Sunderland are in pole position to sign Luke Chapman. Middlesbrough and Newcastle United also have the midfielder as a top target. Now, your penultimate quickfire transfer is that Huddlesfield have signed their former striker, Danny Ward. Now, your final quickfire transfer is one that will excite you Birmingham City fans. This is because Birmingham City are interested in taking Tottenham Hotspur winger Jack Clark on loan. Now moving on to the final segment of the video, this is where I go in depth on three transfers which have recently happened Now on to the final segment of the video, this is where I go into in-depth analysis on three confirmed transfers that have recently happened, a bit about the player, a bit about the move and a bit about his actual career. So the first transfer which I'm going to be going in-depth into is the transfer of Charlie Goode to Brentford. So as you would know if you are a fan of this channel, Charlie Goode was one of the many Northampton players which broke Cheltenham Hearts by knocking us out of the playoffs and not giving us the chance to go to Wembley and get what we deserve, which was that promotion. But even though it was very, very upsetting for both Cheltenham players and Cheltenham fans, you can't bet anything against Northampton and Charlie Goode himself. He had a great few games, and he has had a really good season getting himself into the League 2 team of the season. So, he played 97% of his possible minutes this season, showing he has been consistent all season, never been dropped by the manager, and I think the only game he missed, he actually did have a knock. So he's never shown to the manager that he has to be dropped, which is a really, really good thing and more positives for Brentford. Within that, he got four goals and two assists from centre-back, giving him a goal contribution every 1,000 minutes, which for a centre-back isn't actually too bad. He can play both right and left centre-back, which, which means he is quite versatile, because not many centre-backs who play, let's say, on the right can play on the left, because it's usually because of a preferred foot or balance in the side. But this shows that he can use both feet as a really good asset if they do need different centre-back partnerships with him at Brentford. I'm not sure if this is confirmed, but it says from my sources that the fee was around 990000 which I believe is very good. But if he does turn out good for Brentford, 
he could be a bargain. So essentially, if he does play well for Brentford, this could work out well for both sides of the deal. And a quick review of his career. He hasn't played for that many clubs as he is only 25. But the main clubs he has played for is Scunthorpe, Northampton and now obviously Brentford. Our second in-depth transfer is going to be John Obi Mikel to Stoke City. So this was a free transfer but could be a very very good bit of business or a very risky one. He is not the oldest at 33 but he has just come off a very dodgy season in the Turkish league playing 38 games and getting zero goal contributions. Granted he is from the central defensive mid position but if Charlie Goode is getting goals and assists from centre back you could say he should have at least two or three. But he's never actually been known for his goals. He's played just over 450 games in his career, getting himself only one goal. Within that time, getting 18 assists, 89 yellows, and surprisingly after all them yellows, only three red cards. But like I said, I'm a big fan of the player and I believe this is great business for Stoke because he's played 250 games in the Premier League. He's an experienced head and he's a serial winner. So he has won the African Cup of Nations with Nigeria. He's also won the Premier League, the Champions League, the Europa League, four FA Cups, the Community Shield, the Carabao Cup twice. Like he's a serial winner and I think this is absolutely great business for Stoke. Just even if he doesn't play that many minutes, just to have someone in the dressing room which knows how to win, knows how to get through those tough games and just tell the players what to do. So let's move on to the last transfer of the video. So the final transfer of the video is going to be Aaron Ramsdale's move from Bournemouth to Sheffield United. So I guess you could say this isn't a EFL move as it is technically from a Premier League club to a Premier League club. But I've involved it into the video because Bournemouth are now a championship club after them being relegated. So Aaron Ramsdale moved from Bournemouth to his previous club Sheffield United where he spent as a boy for £18 million pounds or so, just over that, I believe. And he actually went from Sheffield to Bournemouth for only £900,000. So a great bit of business over a few years for Sheffield United and obviously some much needed money right now for Bournemouth. In my opinion, he has been one of the underrated goalkeepers of the Premier League. I do enjoy watching Bournemouth from time to time because I do like their football and I was quite upset that they went down. But he does not deserve any any stress or any hate after the season he's had. Granted, he only kept five clean sheets and conceded 62 goals. Now, in the Premier League, I guess you could say that is unacceptable. But when you put into perspective that he made 129 saves, the defence were just not helping him out. Like, he had to make two tackles, 42 clearances. He was even getting 200 accurate long balls, meaning the team just wasn't helping him out and doing in any way, shape or form the art of defending. He was even getting more passes than some of the def defenders and midfielders, getting 945 passes. Yeah, and that's really all I can say about him. I cannot praise this lad enough. I think he can go right to the very, very top. If he keeps his head screwed on, I believe he can be one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League. And that is about it, guys. I really hope you guys did enjoy this latest episode of EFL Transfer Talk. If you have any questions or queries, drop a comment down below and we will most likely reply to them or at least like them if they are positive to the channel. Any positivity is welcome or constructive criticism. Any way that we, you guys think we can improve, we'll accept it as long as it actually isn't too negative. Our links, as always, will be down below if you want to go to our Instagram or our Twitter or anything like that. If you haven't already liked the video, please go do so. It would mean the world to us and subscribe to the channel with the notification bell turned on. There will be two videos like this on screen very shortly and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.